Huh? We hear the strings. Yeah. Was that also in the office? What, what was what was the mic technique of the strings? Most of the time I used a, like like a pair of 67s as A B in omnidirection directional. Yeah. <laughs> and then then other mics in f uh, up above up the, over the above the yeah, okay. fiddle. <laughs> and how many um, how many what size was the strings that you recorded? How many people were there? It differs from song to song. Most people we recorded uh, were twelve but not in the office. Okay. We went to another studio and then most of the times we were like three violins and we would double them. Yeah. And here in this song it was only one player. Okay. But he brought three different instruments and we changed the, the mic positions from take to take and he changed the style of playing. And uh, we didn't want to have like a big orchestra sound more than like a small yeah. thing. So what was the studio? Which studio did you go to? We went to a Telex studio. Okay. Why, why did you choose there particularly? I mean, is it a great good room for strings? Yeah, we thought. We, we did it when we did this uh, the music for this play, for this theatre thing. And it was the first time that we really recorded so many people at once. And ma made so big string arrangements really. and. Yeah, the guys who who we got in contact with, they said we have to go there, and we, we said, yeah, okay, we don't know, let's go there. But in the end, it, it came out that the the room was pretty too, was too orchestral for for the sound we really wanted. So, so it was too. It was lush. too yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for like did did it did it did it stuff. It was too orchestral. Yeah, and here it sounds more like. Not that expensive and raw. Yeah. Again the same. It's a bit scratchy. It's again the M10. When you're working with this many layers, I mean, yeah. um, not many people produce with brass, tambourine, glockspiel, or vibraphone, yeah. guitar, bass. I mean, what, what, how, how is, how is your production sort of changed by as, as you build up that layers? It must be difficult to keep it all separate in the mix and keeping it all visual, especially when you're distorting things and really compressing. I mean, how do you stop the mix going really muddy and? Yeah, the fr uh, what we did is like put really not in this song but with other songs we really separated the tracks so we put the strings only mono to left to the to the left side and the drums to the right side so and there was a different approach in mixing so we never put the drums only really on the right channel and just a little bit um, reverb on the on the on the left leakage. Yeah. Uh, it's really. We are not really not used to it, and then we've decided, okay, let's try it. Let's people did it, so let's try. So again, them. you're emulating old mixing techniques as well, trying to sort of yeah, discovering them maybe yeah, and discover. and put them into our world. Yeah. So I mean, with, with this track, was there much problems on mix down? Because I mean, there's a lot of layers. Yeah, but the mix down is really like. There's not really really a point where you say now we start to mix because we it's a record it's it's a, it's the process of recording it so then you start it so even on the way in when mm. you're going in into into tape or to pro tools yeah. you're preparing for that point yeah you mean? Like it's already a decision for the mix then okay. yeah so how long how long did this take this particular track would you say I mean there's a lot of editing and yeah. Of not so much Melodyne in this track. <laughs> we didn't do anything to Ben in this track with Melodyne. I can't really say because we produced the tracks uh, in pa parallel. Yeah. So we had 
two days where, when we would like to record the horns and then prepare all the horns, yeah. the so the arrangements. Yeah. yeah. There's for no all point tracks. Whole plays in and out all the time. Yeah. So what I mean, what I what are the plugins that we used on this? Can we have a look at some of the plugins that we use in terms of uh, okay. the ones that you you genuinely impress you? That you use because you love them, not because you've run out of compressors or yeah. EQs or I always use filter bank. Yeah. That's what I always use. Is um, that maybe is that more of a problem solving tool rather than a creative tool? Yeah. Yeah. So you're using it to cut. Yeah. And even the the waves, the Q1, yeah. Q10, because it can re go really sharp into sounds. Yeah, take out buzzes or... Yeah, yeah. Compressors, I, sometimes I use the 1176. The, no, it's called BF76. <laughs> and what do you think of that? Is it, is it okay? It's okay, but it's, di it's different to, the, to a hardware piece, I guess. It's not... Better or or worse? Okay. <laughs> it so controls and it's good, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it re really doesn't add character to sounds. Okay. Yeah, what's new with this LP is that that we've more focused on producing or writing songs. Stefan got more and more into writing songs than, than we did on the first Jazz and Nova album uh, in between. Uh, yeah, that's, that's cool. So do you think yeah. this is uh, a new direction for you? At the moment, yeah. Okay. yeah. So you're still excited about working like this? And you're looking totally, yeah. We're looking for a new studio now to get more into it, to get a Bigger Bimobier. recording. <laughs> oh. Yeah, by Mobile. Yeah, and when we finish the track, we record everything to tape and go with the tapes to the mastering house. That's those tapes or those tapes? Yeah, the. Oh, okay. The, the studio master. Yeah. Okay. And it was mastered in Berlin? In Berlin, yeah. yeah. At Kalex Mastering. I know these guys for a long time, and it's cool that you, you have a mix and you can go there and check things out and go, go back and change maybe something before you print it to tape and really have to do the mastering then. <laughs>